back enough. If I did not, I won't see it. Should be okay.
save one for Mike.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. I'll ask everybody to take your seats. Before the service commences, I would like to remind everyone to be aware of the exits within the facility, which are clearly marked in the event they are required in an emergency. As well, you will find a first aid station at the rear of the hall, should you require it. The ceremony will commence in approximately 20 minutes. During the ceremony, all uniformed members are to remove their headdress, including during the playing of our national anthem, when we will honour our national anthem by standing at attention. At this time, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg people, which are collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We also acknowledge members of the Wendat Nation who occupied these lands prior to the middle of the 17th century. Again, we'll be starting in about 20 minutes. Thank you. But, I, but two old guys disappeared. I don't know where they went. There's Nick.
Could I please ask everybody to take their seats? Thank you. If you are able, please rise and remove your headdress for the entrance of the funeral procession. 
led by Constable Gris Gilbertson, Pipe Major of Commissioner Pipes and Drums. Provincial Constable Prichella's safe passage has been entrusted to the Ontario Provincial Police Ceremonial Unit.
If you are able, please remain standing as we honour our country with the singing of our national anthem, O Canada, performed by our very own Staff Sergeant Valerie Burns. On behalf of members in uniform, Ontario Provincial Police Commissioner Thomas Creek will take this salute. All uniform members, please come to attention. Thank you. I would ask if you're able, please remain standing as we, in a collective act of remembrance, observe a moment of silence to honour the life of Provincial Constable Greg Pichella. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome, everyone. My name is Dwight Thibb. I'm a Chief Superintendent with the Ontario Provincial Police, and I was Greg's Regional Commander. I'm both humbled and honoured to be presiding over this ceremony as we celebrate the life of Greg Priscilla. While I'm honoured to do so, I'm deeply saddened and my heart was broken by the fact that just two and a half months ago, we gathered in this same place to honour Constables Morgan Russell and Devin Northrup of the South Simcoe Police Service who also paid the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. Last week, many of us watched as Provincial Constable Greg Pichella was escorted home. The hour-long journey from Toronto to Barrie passed along communities under overpasses where fellow officers, emergency service personnel, and members of the public lined the streets and the bridges to honour Provincial Constable Pichella's sacrifice. They stood in solidarity with one of our own. We saw the flags and the salutes, heard the drums, read the signs, witnessed the aircraft flying overhead, and we all felt the grief together. I thank everyone who attended then and who has come here today to honour our fallen colleague. One of my biggest fears when I was promoted to the rank of chief was an on-duty death of one of my members. When the unthinkable happens, especially when it's one of our own, it has a profound effect on all officers our members, their families, and friends. I ask that you reach out to one another and offer support to each other. To C Platoon and all the members of the Holland Detachment, we are here with you and we will continue to support you 
as we strive to get through this difficult time together. Greg would have wanted nothing less. At this time, I acknowledge the family of Provincial Constable Priscilla. With us today are Greg's parents, Janina, John, his older brother Chris, younger brother Michael, and his younger sister Justina. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this day with us. We stand with you and share in your grief. Today we are honoured by the, presidents, the presence of the Honourable Elizabeth Doudsbaugh, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Deputy Premier Sylvia Jones, representatives from all levels of government, Chiefs of Police and their members from across the nation, Ontario Provincial Police Association President John Saracello, Police Service Board members, representatives from all emergency services, Gray and Simcoe Foresters, Mayor of Haldeman County, Shelley Ann Bentley, Mayor of Barrie, Alex Nuttall, our own members of the Ontario Provincial Police, and the members of our communities who join us remotely. On behalf of the Prishala family and Commissioner Creek, I welcome all of you to today's service. Today, we will hear from several speakers, including members of government, police officials, and family members. At this time, I invite the 29th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, Her Honour, the Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, to the podium. Commissioner Karik, Premier Ford, members of the Bruchala family, and all of us who are here to grieve. We're here to remember Provincial Constable Greg Bruchala, who was killed in the line of duty. A tragedy, an injustice, an incomprehensible loss. Today, we're here to honour him. We're here to celebrate and uphold his memory. And we're here for one another, for Greg's courageous fellow officers, and most of all, for his loving family. And here we will stay. It is my privilege as the King's representative, and on behalf of all Ontarians, to offer my deepest condolences to Janina, John, Chris, Michael, and Justina. On December 27th, a family lost a beloved son and brother. The OPP lost a remarkable constable. The Canadian Armed Forces lost a former reservist. And our province lost a hero. All of us lost the potential of what was yet to come. Today, at the wake of such a profound tragedy, we struggle with a terrible mix of emotions. Sorrow, anger, grief. And in these times, I think of the words of our late sovereign, Queen Elizabeth, who said, grief is the price we pay for love. Thousands of people across this province and country have chosen to be here today. Thousands who did not know him, but who nevertheless grieve. They grieve deeply. Thousands who stand here today because they loved what Greg stood for, upheld, and ultimately died to protect. We love the dream a little boy once held of becoming a police officer and serving his community. We love the aspirations of a young man who approached life with determination, 
passion to realize that dream. And we love the principles of duty and service that Greg embodied and the peace that he strove to keep. The devastating loss comes at an already difficult time. We've never lost so many police officers in this province in such a short period. And today, for many of us, words seem so completely inadequate. To the officers gathered here today, simply put, I stand with you. But as importantly, the people of Ontario stand with you. People who witness the extraordinary impact you make in their communities every day. Youth in search of someone to look up to. Victims in search of justice. Communities in search of leadership. People who find what they're looking for in you, in your courage, in your sacrifice. Service before self. Seldom do we fully appreciate the weight of the responsibility of being there for us in our darkest hours. All we can strive to do now is to be there in yours. At Queen's Park, where Greg served as a special constable, stands the police memorial. Engraved in stone are the words, heroes in life, not death. This is not a passive phrase. It's an obligation. It's our obligation. Our obligation to Greg and to all those who share his profession. Those who hold the passion to serve, the dedication to lead, and the courage to answer the call. We will remember Greg and this day as a call to each of us, a call to our better selves and our common humanity. Today, tomorrow, forever. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Your Honour. I now turn the podium over to the Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Ford. Your Honour, Commissioner, fellow ministers, and the women and men that serve and protect our great province, I stand with you with a heavy heart to remember and pay a tribute to Provincial Constable Greg Pachella. Today is a painful reminder that policing is a family's calling. Janina, John, Chris, and Justina and Michael, nothing can erase your pain. No one could understand your loss. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your son and brother with us. I want to thank you for having me here to honour him. Our province and the people he bravely served will never forget a sacrifice. We will never forget your sacrifice. 
I want to thank Commissioner Thomas Creek for your leadership during this terrible tragedy. It's a painful time for every member of the service you lead. Your strength is helping carry them through. Thank you, Commissioner. And to every member of Ontario's heroic police services, I want to thank each and every one of you. I'm so sorry for your pain. We all grieve with you as you mourn another loss of one of your own. As Premier, I've said this many times, I will always, always have your back. Every day, you put your life on the line to protect the people of Ontario. I'll do whatever it takes to protect each and every one of you and the communities you serve. I didn't have the privilege of knowing Greg, but it's very clear from the special stories and fond memories being shared today. Greg was a remarkable young man, both in his life and work. From a young age, he made a lasting impression on everyone he met. Greg was a role model through and through. And as an officer, Greg made the same positive impressions with his fellow members of the Ontario Provincial Police. Those who worked alongside him called him exemplary. His brothers and sisters in uniform knew he was rock solid. They knew he could be relied on when it mattered most. And as we've heard over the last few days, Greg was living his dream of being a police officer. It's what he wanted to do as a little boy of just five years old. It was his calling. Before becoming an officer, Greg had served proudly as a member of the Canadian Armed Forces and as a special constable at Queen's Park. Proudly protecting our province's legislature and the hundreds of elected officials and staff who worked there. Greg's life was one of duty, one of service to others. He had limitless potential, his whole life ahead of him. Losing Greg this way, on the same day he learned he passed his probationary period, on the same day he would become the officer he always dreamed of being, it's cruel beyond words. And his brave young man died just two days after Christmas. It's yet another difficult reminder that the job of a police officer is one of total commitment. While most of us peacefully enjoy the holidays at home with loved ones, our officers and first responders are on the front lines. They're providing us with safety and protection we too often take for granted. And sadly, the last four months, we've buried too many heroes. Andrew Hong, Travis Gillespie, Morgan Russell, Devin Northrup, and now Greg. They each made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. They each leave a void that will never be filled. We can never repay them or their families for what they gave. But what we can do and what we must do is commit to never forgetting what they sacrificed and who they were. These men were heroes in life and we will always remember them that way. 
Janina, John, Chris, Michael, and Justina. As I think of this terrible loss, I also want to remember how blessed we are to have had someone like Greg. His service and sacrifice will never be forgotten. He will always be honored with the greatest respect and gratitude. May God forever bless his memory, his family, and our police officers across this, across this great province. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Ford. I now welcome the Solicitor General of Ontario, the Honourable Michael Kirzner, to the podium. Your Honour, Premier, Deputy Premier, Ministers, elected officials, Commissioner Karik, Police Chiefs, Deputy Solicitor General, and the leaders of the associations who are here with us today, and most importantly to Greg's family, to John and Janina and Chris and Michael and Justina, our words today will never be sufficient. And we know that, but we thank you at this heartbroken time for sharing with us, Greg, and allowing us in your hearts and lives to grieve with you and to pray with you. It is true, as the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of Public Safety will attest, especially by all those present today in person and watching online, that Greg was very much part of their fabric and part of the honour and duty that kept us safe. The brotherhood and sisterhood believes as we do, and especially today, that everyone has a fundamental right to feel safe in their own homes and communities. And for this, we always thank everyone who makes this happen. Je voudrais remercier chaque personne qui travaille fort pour assurer la sécurité de notre province. With this brotherhood and sisterhood, we know we can count on you in good times and in sad. Our past is filled with moments trying like this, and it's not easy. But this is who you are. This is who you will always be. And tragically, many of us have known those who made the ultimate sacrifice, so many and so soon and the wounds are still so fresh. And today we remember Greg and acknowledge his contribution to our public safety. And no keeping our community safe has exacted a heavy toll. There is no loss greater than the loss of one of our own. And it is true that today we are in a dark time, but stars only shine in the darkness and Greg was a shining star. You cannot help but be swept up in his story, a story of amazing ambition, a career he chose on his own terms. Perhaps like Frank Sinatra sang it, he did it his way. A career of meaning, from being a reservist in our Canadian forces to special constable who protected our place of democracy at Queen's Park to his path to the Ontario Police College in 2021 and to proudly take his spot as a member of the OPP. He never forgot where he came from, where he stood and how he stood, never forgetting his family, his Polish roots and his faith. He was a person of faith and we know that our faith will follow us wherever we go. He was a powerful force for good, and it showed. 
and Greg believed in the strength of his family and his colleagues because like him, we as well believe in our province and our future and together how unstoppable we can be to build the best Ontario possible. Parce que nous croyons en notre province et en notre avenir. So let me ask a question to the brotherhood and sisterhood here today. How do you know who you are until you cross the line? The line of understanding the essence of service over self. The line of believing in our communities, in public safety. That when you have a community, you have absolutely everything. A place to raise a family and to work and to live life and to pray. I really believe that Greg understood this because he was an example of service over self. It is said that if one wants to pursue a life of meaning and adventure, the way to do it is to find the dignity and goodness and be willing to help others and believe in something so much bigger than yourself. And for Greg, keeping our province safe was never about the destination. It was always about his journey and to find out what's beyond the horizon. We're here to pay a debt of gratitude, a debt of honor in memory of Greg, knowing that it is a debt we can never adequately repay. But we have a duty beyond memory, and we have a duty beyond honoring. We have a duty to live our lives and make every minute count, to live on the principles that Greg held dear, the ideals of who we really are and what matters, our families and our communities. Greg may have left us on this earth, but he will never leave our hearts. And Greg's parents and siblings, more than anyone else, will miss his voice. It was, as many here today will remind us, a voice of determination, never wanting to give up, a voice of hope, a voice of promise, a voice of friendship, of warmth, a voice, unfortunately, that will be profoundly missed. Greg is in heaven. He's passed the surly bonds to touch the face of God. May Greg's good deeds be for a blessing, and may his soul be bound up in the bonds of everlasting life. Thank you, Solicitor General Kirzner. I now introduce the Commissioner of the Ontario Provincial Police, Thomas Kareek, and welcome to the podium. The Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario. Honourable Sylvia Jones, Deputy Premier of Ontario. Honourable Michael Kersner, Solicitor General of Ontario. Secretary of Cabinet, Deputy Solicitor General. Indigenous leaders, elected officials, dignitaries representing all levels of government. OPP Haldeman Detachment members, police officers, call takers, dispatchers, special constables, civilian colleagues, military and emergency services personnel, along with family and friends, thank you. Thank you for being with us here today as we remember and pay our respects to Provincial Constable Greg Pershala. Janina John Chris, Michael, Justina, thank you for the honour and privilege to pay tribute and our respects to Greg on behalf of the Ontario Provincial Police. I, like so many of you here today, over the past week, I have and will continue to experience a range of emotions. From when hearing that an officer had been shot, 
praying passionately that Greg would be okay, to disbelief and absolute heartbreak over his death, the feeling of fear over having to share the devastating news with his family, the strong desire to be by Greg's side and that of his platoon, to absolute confidence in the OPP and Six Nations Police, and a sense of relief as I listened intently to the police radio from the OPP helicopter while the two accused who are responsible for Greg's murder were safely taken into custody, followed by anger and outrage over the senseless and preventable circumstances surrounding Greg's death. To where I am today, still heartbroken, but also humbled, proud, grateful, and indebted. I am truly humbled to have shared the same uniform as Greg and immensely proud to lead the OPP. Grateful to those who came to Greg's aid and stayed by his side. Grateful for the outpouring support and compassion from our extended policing family from coast to coast to coast and the public alike. Indebted, indebted to Greg's family for their un unimaginable loss. And also, also indebted to those who will carry on Greg's legacy by finding the strength and resolve to do as Greg did serve our province and protect its citizens with pride, with professionalism, and with honour. Over the last week, I have spent considerable time reflecting on a brief moment in time and a very special photograph that I will now cherish forever. This past Easter, I was out for an early morning ride when I came across an OPP cruiser prominently parked along the side of the road. As I have done many times before, I wheeled up to say hi, mindful that out of uniform I needed to approach the cruiser so as not to cause the officer concern. I approached from head on and positioned myself a safe distance from the driver's side window, patiently waiting for the officer to acknowledge me on this damp, windy, cool morning. Well, on the phone, with veteran-like confidence, the officer slowly lowered his window and glanced my way. I introduced myself, and this veteran-like confidence quickly turned to disbelief, as Greg shared with me how excited he was to be out patrolling on his own for the very first time. He had just been granted what we at the OPP refer to as his day wings, one of the most exciting and nerve-wracking days in every provincial constable's career. He asked if we could take a selfie of the two of us, which I later came to learn he widely distributed around, and I understand for which he took considerable heat from his peers. <laughs> little did I know, little did I know that only eight months later, at Christmas, nonetheless, our paths would cross again. However, this time, this time, sadly, it would be his final tour of duty. The very same day he had received a glowing final report on having completed his probationary period as a provincial constable. I have heard many inspiring stories regarding how Greg was highly respected as a police officer, an accomplished athlete, and simply an extraordinary individual who by his actions inspired others to do and be better. Greg was an honorable man who embodied the total package through a thoughtful and balanced pursuit of mind body and spirit, strong and proudly grounded in his faith, continually seeking the necessary knowledge to understand and grow intellectually, mentally focused, disciplined, and driven by his values, and most obvious, 
physically prepared and capable to conquer any challenge put before him. One of the highest compliments came from a respected retired detective and good friend of mine who met Greg at the gym and felt Greg would have been a great partner for one of his daughters. Knowing how protective he is of his girls, there is truly no higher compliment one could receive from this veteran detective and accomplished tactical officer. Greg was driven by a higher purpose to fulfill his childhood dream of becoming a police officer. Through martial arts, he prepared himself physically and mentally. He methodically sought out experience with the Canadian Armed Forces Gray and Simcoe Foresters and as an OPP Special Constable at Queen's Park to prepare himself professionally. Ontario Provincial Police Association John Sarasolo said it best, we truly lost an officer who had great potential. Potential that he demonstrated time and time again. A former high school teacher and family friend of mine recognized what so many others did, that Greg had a gift and a purpose in life. In the days following Greg's death, she wrote, Greg was one of my favorite students. There are people who come into our lives who are special. And for me, Greg was one of them. Being a police officer is not something someone just does. It is not just a job. It is who we are. There are only a select few in our society who are willing and able to risk their physical safety, their mental well-being, and the sanctity of their family so others, others can live free from fear, protected from harm, and supported in moments of crisis and unthinkable despair. Greg was one of those select few a police officer who possessed a commitment to service above self, dedication to a sense of duty and responsibility to others. He was one of those select few in society, a dedicated police officer who are so absolutely essential to maintaining the safety and security of our communities. His commitment to being fit to serve and protect, along with his dedication to his fellow officers, can best be highlighted when following the tragic murder of Toronto Police Service Constable Andrew Hong, Greg smashed out a 10-mile run and sent a picture of Andrew along with his impressive time. Because of course, for those who run and ride, speed always matters. He sent that picture to his coach officer Constable Evan O'Hara saying, stay hard, rest in peace, leading to Evans and Greg's shared commitment to get after it for those who can't anymore. Well, now it's our turn. It's our turn to get after it for Greg, to pick up where he left off, to dig deep, to find the strength, faith, and resilience to carry on. For those of us in uniform, that means carrying on Greg's legacy of being the best we can be through our relentless pursuit of self and the courageous, selfless service to others. Greg's legacy and those who continue to serve in his honor are most deserving of the necessary protection, care, and respect that can only be realized by each of us who are in a position of authority, taking responsibility to protect and care for those we entrust our personal and safe safety and security to. Those select few, our dedicated police officers, they, they are deserving of nothing less. We can all take strength from the words of OPP Superintendent Dana Early, who said, we will never get over losing Greg, 
but together we will get through it. A powerful truth that I have personally witnessed bearing itself out through the leadership of Sergeant Ben Gutenberg and PC Evan O'Hara and the tireless actions displayed by Greg's platoon mates, his command team, and the larger Haldeman County Detachment. Provincial Constable Greg Pershala, you truly are a hero in life. Your sacrifice will never be forgotten. Janina, John, Chris, Michael, and Justina, you will forever be a part of our OPP family. God bless you. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we will hear from the Polish Ambassador to Canada, Witold Jelski. Provincial Constable Greg Pershella was known to be fiercely proud of his Polish heritage and the culture he celebrated with his family. I now call Ambassador Jelski to the podium. Pani Janino, Panie Janie Pieszchała, family of Grzegorz Pieszchała, Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Premier, Solicitor General, OPP Commissioner, Ministers, members of the Ontario Provincial Police, members of the Canadian Armed Forces, Droga Polonio, Drodzy Gurale. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, we were all deeply moved as we learned about the tragic death of Grzegorz Pieszchała last week. I'm humbled to be here today with his family, his friends, colleagues from the police force. Grzegorz Pieszchała was a Canadian citizen and a member of the proud Polish-Canadian Highlander community. Poland and the Polish people have a strong history of dedication, serving, and fighting for what is right. It was so when over 22,000 Polish Americans and Polish Canadians departed from Kościuszko camp in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, in 1917 to fight for the freedom of Europe. It was so um, when Poles stood ground at the famous Battle of Warsaw in 1920 to defend Europe against the Bolshevik communist invasion. It was so when Poles with their Canadian brothers in the several theaters of the Second World War fought to liberate countries from German and Soviet occupiers. It was so with the famous Polish Solidarity Movement which paved the way for the nations of Central Eastern Europe to get rid of the communist oppression towards the end of 1980s. It was so in 2022, this past year, as Poles rushed to help millions of Ukrainian women and children fleeing the Russian invasion. Polish dramatic history shows how people of Polish origin value service to their country, to their community, to those they care for. I have not had a chance to meet with Grzegorz Pieszchała, but from what I hear from his friends, from his family, and we, what we all hear from the media these past days, he was a spectacular person. One that aimed high and achieved his goals. He took after his Polish parents, who are proud Polish Highlanders, and Polish Gurale. Pieszchała, with his faith in God, strength, dedication, conviction to protect his family, community, served the common good. 
Within the Highlander families in Poland, in Canada and elsewhere, these values are passed on through generations. No wonder that Saint John Paul II, the Polish Pope, a great friend of the Polish Highlanders, believed and used to say that Highlanders are the people you can trust and count on. The other day, I spoke about the death of Grzegorz Pieszchała with a half-blood Highlander and a member of the Polish Highlander Association, President of the Republic of Poland, Andrzej Duda. He was very moved by this tragedy. He assured me that his thoughts will be with us today, and he asked me to pass on his sincere condolences to the family. Today, today we mourn. We stand together with the Pieszchała family and their friends. At the same time, we cherish the memory of Grzegorz Pieszchała's life. His qualities provide and will continue to provide an example to all of us. He died while serving others. He died as a hero. Glory to the heroes. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Jelski. Amazing Grace will be sung by Mr. Robert Pilon, accompanied by Ontario Provincial Police Piper, Provincial Constable Chris Gilbertson. Mr. Pilon, if you would.
Thank you, Mr. Pilal, Provincial Constable Gilbertson, and the Pipers. That was beautiful. At this time, I welcome members of the Priscilla family to the podium for words of reflection. Michael and I were extremely lucky to have had Greg as both an older brother and as a role model. He's probably had a greater influence on us than anyone else has ever had. Despite being young, he had achieved so much in such a short period of time, and he was always striving to accomplish something more. But today, we don't want to talk about his achievements. We'd rather say a few words about what he was like and the kind of impact that he had on all of us, because that's what really matters. <clears throat> Greg was one of my three older brothers. Being both the youngest and the only girl, it wasn't always easy, but I found comfort knowing that I had three big brothers to protect me. Among the three, Greg took this job the most serious. He was always making sure that I was in a good place, both mentally and physically, and was always checking to make sure that I was headed in the right direction. Greg often emphasized how I should surround myself with good people and how it's better to have few friends leading you in a direction towards success than to have many that might be dragging you down. One of the last talks that we managed to have, he mentioned that no matter how small my circle of friends got, he would always be there as both a brother and a true best friend. Greg had also become one of my greatest influences because he had his priorities set straight. If I had to narrow it down, 
It would ultimately come down to his health, his faith, his education, his work, and above all, family. He loved to spend time with us, and he made this very clear. Greg was also so much more than just a police officer. He was always curious and wanted to learn as much as he possibly could. Once he got hooked on something, he would dedicate so much time and effort towards it. This enthusiasm in learning led him to develop several different hobbies and interests, which is a side of him that I had the privilege of getting to know. He loved art. It was a pain to go to museums with him because he could stare at a single painting all day. He would tell me about his plans to dedicate a whole room in his future house where he could go and stare at artwork after a long day. He liked to dance. Whenever we were at an event and he saw that I wasn't dancing, he would take me by the hand and lead me straight to the dance floor. Although he may have not been the greatest dancer, the effort was surely there. He loved being in nature. He spent lots of his time off going on long trips to Algonquin, where he would completely disconnect from the world. It was there that he found lots of peace. Greg even developed an interest in gardening. He would send me a bunch of random pictures of all the bushes and flowers that he would plant, and I still remember him being so proud of it. We would take trips to the greenhouse together, and he would spend what felt like hours looking at all the descriptions, just trying to learn more. Although I may not have found it as interesting, he didn't really care at the time because he got to pursue his interests and at the same time, spend time with me. Greg's wisdom is something that particularly stood out to me. When he came home, he'd often ask me the classic question, how was school? What would typically be a five minute conversation turns into an hour long meeting debriefing everything I've done in school. He would give me his opinions and offer me with an insight that I would have never seen before. He would then spend another hour giving me life advice, which will always stick with me. Greg became one of my greatest teachers, and I can't even imagine how much more I could have learned. Greg died a hero, and he lived as an inspiration. I may have not said it often, but I love you, Greg, and you'll always be my big brother. Being Greg's younger brother, I got to know a slightly different side of him. Now Greg was truly an outstanding and moral person, but it would be a mistake to think that it was always easy for him to be like this, or that he couldn't help but be a good person all the time. It took him plenty of effort and deliberation to become the virtuous person that we all knew. The reason I'm saying this is because he once told me about a turning point that caused him to reevaluate his own character and it changed the course of his life. He was around 13 years old and he'd made friends with the wrong group of kids and they all gotten themselves into some trouble. Luckily, a strict teacher had pulled him aside and firmly told him that he was on the wrong path and that he was wasting his potential. For whatever reason, Greg took this extremely seriously and he later told me that this is where he consciously decided to become the respectable and honest person 
that he'll be remembered as. It wasn't an easy thing for him to do, but it was worth doing as he had a positive impact on so many people's lives because of it. He was humble, generous, funny, and competent. But I think what really separated him from others were his high standards for everything in his life. He was obsessed with excellence, doing things right, and he always wanted things to be as good as they could be. He liked exercising, so a few months ago he ran the Hamilton Marathon. He loved to read, so he'd buy so many books that they'd pile up in his room faster than he was able to read them. Now, these high standards weren't always such a good thing, as unfortunately for me, he'd really let me know if my room wasn't clean. And because he was like this, it wasn't an easy thing to make him proud, and he could be judgmental. But it was never crushing either, because when you did do something right, he'd let you know. And it would mean the world, because it came from him, and you knew that you must have really hit the mark if it was something that Greg appreciated. Greg was the most courageous person I knew. He was always doing challenging things that he was afraid of. But courage, it's not about never being afraid. It's about doing the right thing despite being afraid. And really, it's a defining quality of all the police officers that are willing to risk their lives for us every day. Greg was very aware of the risks of the job, but he did it nonetheless. He would come home every week to spend time with the family, and when it was time for him to go back to work, he always made sure that he said a proper goodbye to everyone in the family. For me, he'd barge into my room with a grin on his face, and he'd give me a nice, firm handshake. And sometimes it was over the top and exaggerated, but it was really important to us, and I'm glad that he did that. When I was preparing for this, I was thinking of all the significant things we had done together. The big trips and special events and celebrations. But it was really these sorts of day-to-day -day interactions, like those handshakes, that really stuck out to me for some reason. And I think it's because, since you do them all the time, they're really the bulk of what make up relationships. And though they became habit, I'm really glad that I appreciated the little things and cherished the seemingly trivial time that I spent with him because it was so valuable. Over the last few days, I've spoken to a lot of people that knew Greg well, and there was this common thing that some people would say that I thought was true as well. It was that Greg had this really unique effect of inspiring you to become more. I remember thinking, oh, Greg just bought flowers for our mom after working out for two hours, after finishing a 12-hour shift. I should probably go do something today. <laughs> See, the special thing about Greg, it wasn't just that he made your life better directly through his actions. It was also that through the example he set, he made you want to be a better person. He made you want to make your own life better. And I can't think of a better influence than someone can have than that. To finish, I'd like to read a quote written by the great Charles Dickens. This is a quote that had some meaning to Greg and that I believe is fitting. I see a beautiful city and a brilliant people rising from this abyss. I see the lives for which I lay down my life, peaceful, useful, prosperous, and happy. I see that I hold a sanctuary in their hearts and in the hearts of their descendants, generations hence. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to 
than I have ever known. Thank you for those touching words, Michael and Justina. As we have heard throughout the remarks given here today, Provincial Constable Greg Purcella was a dedicated athlete he enjoyed activities including soccer, swimming, cycling, and was accomplished in wrestling and the martial arts. At this time, I welcome Canadian Armed Forces Sergeant Hodder to make a presentation. Sergeant. I was Greg's coach. I, I didn't know Greg as an officer. I didn't know him as a brother or a son. However, I did know him through the countless hours that we put together in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I found he put everything into improving and perfecting his craft through patience, dedication, and alacrity. But not only that, he was always willing to share his knowledge with anyone who asked for it, and he was always there to help. In my experience, the attitude and effort that people put into one thing is the same thing that they put into everything. Therefore, I know that Greg was a great man in every other aspect of his life. Greg was a lifelong martial artist who already had his black belt in karate, and obtaining a black belt in jiu-jitsu was something that was extremely important to him. And for that reason, I'd like to honor Greg with this black belt that he inevitably would have earned. And I'd like to present this to the family. Thank you, Sergeant Hodder. Next, we will hear from Father Mariusz Runovich of St. Mary's Parish. He is here today to lead us in prayer and provide a homily for Greg. I now call on Father Runovich. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent we live on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting house, not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence 
then when we remember that to live in body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight, we are full of confidence. I say and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing Him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ. And each of us will get what he, what he deserves for the things he did in body, good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We never thought that so soon we would again meet at this arena when after not long time ago, we said our goodbyes to two of our police family members, Morgan Russell and Devon Nurtrup from the South Simcoe Police Service. I never thought I would be wearing the OPP black funeral stall and lead the prayer service for our own. Greg Grzegorz Pieszhawa, the son of Jan and Janina, brother of Chris, Krzysztof, Michał, Michael, and the youngest sister, Justyna. From the moment of our birth, we were taken care of by our parents. And the world around us was the place which we were so eager to discover. Our first words which came out of our mouth, our tiny hands which touched the cheeks of our parents while they were holding us in their arms showing us, showering us with countless kisses. Our first steps we took, our first games at home, all of these moments were under supervision and protection of our loving parents. We knew we were safe and we knew we were loved. The world around us began to change and look differently when from the first time our parents walked with us to a building which everyone called school. New friends, adults who introduced themselves to us as our first teachers, the world began revealing itself to us more and more, bringing with itself its hidden surprises, some good and some not so. There were moments while returning from school, our faces did not look so happy. Maybe because we hoped to get a better mark, or our new friends just disappointed us somehow. However, we knew that whatever happened, our loving parents were right there beside us with their loving kiss, with their gentle touch, and the words of wisdom reaffirming us that everything will be okay. The story of Greg's life looked just like that. His parents, Jan and Janina, always tried to raise him and his brothers 
and sister to be people of faith, to be people who respect others, to be people who truly understand what it means to be a good human being. After graduation high school, Greg was thinking of being a man who wears a uniform and serves others, and he began to work on it. The first step to serve others was his choice of study, a psychology at York University, and to volunteer in the hospital. But to serve others, you need to take care of your own health also. Greg took it very seriously, and he wanted his health to be in top-notch condition. So he began to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu, different martial arts, and start to participate in various fighting competitions until he got his black belt. After good and solid preparation, it was a time for Greg to try to get that uniform of his dream, the uniform we wear with the shoulder patches showing three letters, OPP. And the journey began. He got into the police college, then academy. Then he reached the moment of his graduation. The moment when new police officers swear or affirm holding in their hands Bibles or eagle feathers or other holy books representing their belief and their faith. And at the end, they say, so help me God, or so help me my creator. Help me. Help me. From that moment, they all know that service which is asked of them will not be easy. And many times, it will be dangerous. And because of that, the commissioner gives them final advice, reminding them how important it is to take care of themselves and how important it is to take care of those they will serve and protect. From that moment, Greg began to use his gifts and talents as police officer. All of the police officers know how differently the world looks when you take your cruiser and when you go to serve and protect your communities. How many times they see human suffering, tragedies, deaths, and bitter tears. On that day when Greg responded to the call of the car in the ditch, it was still a Christmas time, a time that should supposed to be a time of joy, a time of love, a time when people should be better for each other. So he went to help. However, the world, at the moment of his arrival, showed its ugly and dangerous face. He was shot and later died in the hospital. At the moment of this great tragedy, his family was not there. There were no more words of his parents, Jan and Janina, like in the old good times of his childhood. Don't worry, everything will be 
Okay. The worst tragedy for the parents is to see their child's funeral. There is no pain which could be compared with that one. However, the story of Greg's life does not end today when we say goodbye to him. St. Paul's words from his second letter to the Corinthians, which we heard just a few minutes ago, tell us how actually the story begins. He says, we know that when the tent we live on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting house, not made by human hands in the heavens. We know, we know. St. Paul, 2,000 years ago, conversed face to face with the, resurrection, with the resurrected Christ on the road to Damascus. And from that moment, he knew about God's spiritual and eternal world and his love for every human being. And now you are in God's hands, our brother. The God you ask for help at your police graduation, the God you trusted, the God you loved. And now you're back to him, being safe again. And you have eternity to discover this incredible world with God the Father, which God the Father made for us, and discover God himself. My friends, the world of God is an incredible place. It is the world where there is true peace, true love. It is the world where there is no pain, no tears. And most importantly, it is the world where no one will say goodbye to anyone anymore. In 1893, an incredible Czech composer, Antony Dvořák, being in North America and seeing this so-called new world, was overwhelmed by its beauty. So he decided to write a symphony that we know today as symphony number no. nine, which is called From the New World. The second movement of that musical masterpiece gives us a theme which allows the listeners to use their imagination to see what he saw and feel what he felt looking at this incredible new world. Greg, you entered the new world of the Lord God, the world of peace, the world of true love. Therefore, let me share with you and all present here the simple and at the same time beautiful theme from that symphony which shows us through the music this new world of Dvořák. But this time, let us all go beyond that and let us imagine the new world of Greg, the world built by God 
which is million times more beautiful than the one Dvořák wrote about. Now I would like to invite you to pray with me and the family of Greg, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Father. At this time, members of the ceremony unit will assist Commissioner Thomas Creek as he presents Provincial Constable Priscilla's forge cap and the Ontario Provincial Police flag to his family.
It is now time for the recessional Provincial Constable Prashella's safe passage has been entrusted to the ceremonial unit. Following the recessional parade and on my instruction, members of C Platoon, as well as other members of the Hall of an OPP Detachment, and OPP Deputy Commissioners and the Executive of the Ontario Poli Provincial Police Association will exit the venue through the north door.
All the detachment members, deputies, proceed to form the Guard of Honor. I would ask that everybody else remain at your seats and view the Jumbotron for the final salute. I just ask everybody to take their seats and watch the Jumbotron as we watch the final salute from the Guard of Honor. Thank you. <laughs> 